It's Big Board Sports with Roger Ryland on 104.5 The Team. Always good hanging out, talking basketball with Stephen Daggs. Yeah, Daggs basketball. Welcome, man. Thanks for having me. I knew I knew it was going to be a great morning. I didn't know how good. I'm staring at a picture of Jim Obermeyer right now, my, my good friend. And, you know, when he was coaching Columbia, I, I'm seeing now 26 seasons. My God. You know, he always had us work with his teams, and we trained his daughters a little bit. So my, my morning brightened up a little bit. I get to stare at him for the next couple minutes. You must run into that a lot, though, Dags, right? You look at these pictures, and you go down memory lane, and now, now here you are dealing with uh, either you know, somebody who's – coach with them for them and it all comes full circle doesn't it oh yeah we i was when i was going to the bathroom too i was on my way there and i i saw a picture of one of the guys who trained his kids he played at hamilton and it's an awesome picture so i had to snap i'm going to send it to him later uh you know let him relive a little bit you know well, the high school season tonight, I think this is a week it, it gets rolled in here. Let, let's start with that. What, get, throw me, throw some names out there. Yeah. Uh, some of we may be fa- very familiar with. Some we may yeah. go, wow, okay, you got him on the list. G- give me a little who's who of what we're looking for on the uh, high school basketball scene of the boys' side. Yeah, definitely. I had to, I had to get some notes. I've never brought in some notes, but we, we've worked with so many players over the past couple of years, and there's a lot of really good players. So, I mean, obviously, you got to start with Hamir Wright. At, at Albany Academy, got, has offers from everybody, Syracuse, Villanova, UCLA. Um, I know he really wants to be in, in like an L.A. or Miami area, which which is pretty cool. But, you know, Albany Academy is going to be really good this year, and he kind of heads the ship. doesn't need to score 30 points a game, just needs to be really, really good and a leader for him. Um, in terms of, and let's just stand here, right for a second. Yeah. In terms of ceiling, how high is his ceiling compared to, well, let's just open up to any other player that's yeah, yeah. come through this area. Yeah, if, I mean, just forget about the area. He's an NBA talent. I mean, you look at the NBA, and there's guys that look exactly like him, 6'8", long. I mean, if he turns himself into, like, a lockdown defender um, rather than trying to be, like, an all-out scorer, you know, he's he's got a spot in the NBA. But that being said, you know, that's all potential, and, and you know, he needs to take care of what he needs to take care of now, and that's becoming the best player he can be and, and be a leader and be great for Albany Academy. All right, so, Hamir Wright, I agree top of the list and when we sit down shortly to start talking about who's going to be our number one pick yeah. on our new Channel 13 high school boys basketball team it's going to be hard not to have see the guy because right. you guys are in a tough spot this year it's Hamir Wright or Joe Girard right yeah I mean yeah. Joe Girard third will certainly be in the conversation yep. for sure I, I don't know that we'll we'll let our yeah. scouts uh, have at it but uh, those are probably the top two would you would you go to Joseph Girard the yeah. third next he, he's he's the next one and and you want to talk about just having an impact I mean he's going to score 30 points tonight he's going to see a box in one every single night he's probably going to have you know a triangle two thrown at him um, you know he's a guy who's a competitor you could see it on the football field and translated over to basketball as well so he's definitely the next one Glens Falls is going to have a chance to uh to win the sectionals this year and, and you know do what they did in in football as well on the basketball court so he's definitely the next one yeah. they gonna be good enough to win a state championship in basketball too well let's Maybe. let's you know they got to win the foothills yeah. and then they got to win the sectionals but you know uh, you they lost to hudson last year in the championship yeah, hudson's going to be Class really B. good mckeel's going to be really good but you you just you've seen section two teams once they win sectionals do very very well in the regional and the state tournament so anytime a team has a chance to win the sectional you kind of talk to them talk about it on the state level too talking with steven d'agostino dags basketball and dags before we get to number three i'm, I'm waiting for a colony guy to pop up here yeah it's really soon i think i may may know who that might be yeah uh throw out Dags basketball here somebody who wants to get involved with you yeah. train with you yeah uh, what's the best way to reach out yeah Dags basketball.com or, or I'm at Dags basketball on Twitter or Instagram and, and on Facebook too so they can reach out to me whenever and we're, we always are posting videos and content uh, we're trying to do a new thing where we throw out different basketball moves every week so you know you have a young kid playing or even high school kids playing you can add another move to their arsenal during the season even if you're not getting in and training with us as well how many years yeah. now have you had this I remember when you and your brother yep. came to me. Yeah, oh yeah. You had like just like the just very started. beginning model, like, hey, can you help yeah. promote this? Oh, yeah. And we try to help any way we oh, can, yeah, obviously. We appreciate but, it. But but now look where this has grown yeah, it's since crazy. then. So I mean, how many years ago was that? Two thousand and eight, right when I got out of St. Rose and my brother was just getting into to coaching and then he took off and went full time coaching and, and I kinda ran with the business. So it's just me now, but 
Um, I mean, yeah, since 2008, so about eight years now. Yeah. It's crazy. All right, so we go Hamir Wright. Yeah. Then we go Joseph Girard the These are players to watch. Yeah. High school boys basketball yeah. season really gets rolling tonight. And yeah. I'll ask you about Colony at Troy in a second. Yeah. Who, who's third on the list? Yeah, there's there's like a big grouping. And, and I would put all of these guys into a big grouping. And obviously, you know, the two guys we mentioned first have the most offers. You know, yeah. but then some other guys who, who already have Division One offers. You know, Isaiah Mole from Colony. And, and Colony, and we'll talk about them as a team in a second but you know they have like four or five guys Bryce Waterman Will Abar Brendan Molson Josh Piscosi they got five guys that are legitimate that have a legitimate shot to play in college um, but with Isaiah you know you have Bowie uh, from Troy who's Taylor Battle's younger brother um, Jair Curry from Green Tech um, the kid who I, I really like, Jake Cook from Shaker, who he's he's only a sophomore. He's six foot eight. He can shoot. I think he's going to have a big year. And Sloan Seymour is now over at Shaker as well from CBA. Who he's got a bunch of Division one offers. How big as is well. Sloan Seymour? I think he's like six seven. Yeah, yeah, six seven, six eight. He might be at six eight, but he's more of like a perimeter shooter type guy. Um, Shaker you know, could be good, right? I mean, Shaker's going to be. So we train this year, Shen, Colony, and Shaker, and I think. Those three teams, along with Green Tech and Troy, who are always really good, are going to battle for the Suburban Council Championship. And Shen, you know, everybody's like, ah, oh, they lost Herder. Well, their senior class, I don't know if they lost more than five grades or five games from fifth grade to JV. It's they have a very good senior class, um, and they have a lot of pieces returning. So, I think they're going to be, you know, they're going to be a favorite to, to defend their title, and, and along with those other teams, Shaker's going to be huge. They're going to start everybody over six foot three. Colony's got everybody back um, with four or five guys that are potentially going to play um, in college, and, and Troy and Green Tech are always good. So, you know, it's going to really be, and there's a bunch of other teams too in the suburban that are going to battle for that Double A championship. What have you seen from Isaiah Mole? And I only bring his name up from Colony because he has already been offered. Yep. Uh, to play for Will Brown uh, yeah. at the University at Albany. He hasn't made a decision yet, but yep. the offer has been put out there as the coaches do like to make offers and see if they can get an early yeah. commit along the line. Uh, well, what's your? What, he, I know one thing. When I've seen him oh, yeah. already uh, this year just hanging out, yep. he's chiseled, man. This is, oh, yeah. he's, a, he's a man. Yeah, oh, yeah, he's a grown man, and that's what I think a lot of the college players are going to like. You know, He can shoot it. He can go. He's doing a lot better job now of you know, he can post. Hey, he's lagging guys today in five. Post and score. He can knock down threes. Um, you know, he he does a little bit of everything. His biggest thing is going to be just, you know, how he matures and how he does in big games. And and this is his year to, to really do well. And I think he will. And I he's got a lot of good guys around him too. So you know, he'll be he'll be all set this year. I think. What what about Scotia in the Class A level? They yeah. they went they won 18 games last year. Yep. Uh, they lose one starter, but they have a, another guy that's you know uh, yeah. e experienced uh, yep. to, to to come in there. They could they could make a run at that foothills title. Yeah, and and class A is is a little bit wide open. I heard Lansingburg's very good this year. Uh, we did some work with Avril Park. They're going to be very well in Scotia. Scotia's going to win 15 games. You know what I'm saying? It's like nothing's going to change over there, and and they'll have it going. So you know it'll be nice. Troy, I, I believe, is a double A this year again. Really? I believe they bump up. I could They've be wrong gone on back that. I've heard. Here. Yeah. So so that'll open things up there. Um, as well, and then you know, smaller schools, Glens Falls in, in the B, McKeel in the B, Hudson in the B, and um, you know, going down to, to see Stillwater is very good. Spa Catholic. How about our guys, Mohawk Honda? You know, Tyler Herndon averaging twenty five points a game. Is that is right? That right yeah, for Spa Catholic. Okay, yep. I, wow. I knew that. He, oh yeah, that Herndon family is a swimming family. Gotcha. But. They got a pretty good basketball player at Spock Catholic. Yeah, he's like one of the S Splash Brothers. You know, he's, he's <laughs> knocking down threes. I think he had four threes his last two games. So, uh, you know, he was in the gym before his season started getting some shots up. He's a really nice kid, really great family. And, yeah, like I said, 24 points a game. So so just to recap, in the double A's, we're talking Troy and Troy, Colony. Troy, Green Tech, Colony, Green Tech, Shaker, Shen. Shaker, Shen. Shen. Yeah. And then A's, we're talking Scotia. Lansing, Lansingburg, Averill Park, Averill Park, yeah, all kind of in that mix. And then yeah. in B's, Glens Falls, McKeel, Hudson, Hudson, yeah. and a lot of B's last year. If you remember, there's 26 Class B schools. A lot of them shifted to this Class C now. So like Stillwater dropped. They got a kid, Jared Deloy, is averaging 28 points a game. Um, Mechanicville dropped. Um, so there's going to be Class C is going to be packed with with teams as well this year. Somebody wanted me to remind Dags as I just got a a text message. <laughs> Remind Dags, who is favorite colony seventh grade CDBYL oh, yeah. basketball <laughs> team is. 
I was with him last night. Yeah, we were, that? we were working out uh, Coach Slater and Coach Atkins. We were working out the, uh, the seventh grade team, and, and they said, hey, 11 o'clock tomorrow, what are you going to talk about? And I was like, oh, we're only going to talk seventh grade CDYBL hoops. <laughs> no, we're talking fourth grade. Fourth grade. <laughs> that will be my big team. Big win this past. They told me you won by like 40 or 50 points this week. Who weekend. are the players to watch in fourth grade? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, who's the, who's the hardest? Could, could you, you touch a lot of these kids, and if you don't train them consistently, they come in to work out or play yeah. or whatever. You, you touch a lot of these kids throughout the year. Who's the hardest working kid that you worked with this past this past off season. Nothing like putting you on the spot, huh, I my know. partner here? There's, there's a bunch, you know, and, and just there's a lot of guys who, who you won't hear about during the year, guys who, like, work their butts off just to just to make their team or to, to be in the starting five. Um, as far as, like, the top echelon of players, Joe Girard works really hard. I mean, we had him in with Cremo and Playtech and Herder, and there were times where he did very, very well, and there were times where, like, you know, Joe Cremo scored on him six straight times, and and every time he just got back up and he defended, or or he went at those guys again. Um, you know, he's he's definitely one of the hardest working kids. For How sure. was that two? What was that two on two or three? You said you had Playtech, who's going to North Carolina. Yeah, Herder, who's at Maryland. Cremo, who's the yeah. rookie of the year Kameer, at all. Kameer was there. We had Will Bennett from Academy was very good. August Mahoney, who's an up and comer sophomore, who's an unbelievable him and. Gerard had unbelievable shooting battles this summer as well, too. Um, yeah, I mean, there were times this, this summer where we had 10 scholarship guys in the gym, and, you know, we like to do a lot of, like, competing. So shooting competitions, one-on-one, two-on-twos, um, you know, guys really got after it. And that's all I really care about. I mean, these guys, if you're a scorer, you're going to go score. But what you're going to do at the next level is how hard you compete, how hard you can, or how you're able to bounce back from, hey, we just lost the game or I shot one for ten last game. Am I going to be able to bounce back? That's what I want to see from these guys. You know, it's not about it's not about how many points you score. It's it's what kind of player um, are you going to be consistently. Steve D'Agostino. I've known the family for a long time. His mom for many many years cut my hair. Oh yeah. The and truth be told, Anna cut my hair for I mean probably fifteen years. And then you know sport clips came oh, along. Yeah. You bailed on her. And it's yeah. good to be a guy. And now I. Now I go get this, you know, massage and all this there extra She wasn't treatment. doing that for me. No, you weren't doing that for me. <laughs> so uh, bless, bless, our, bless our schedules just were a little bit on the opposite end and, and all of that. But, uh, no, I've known the Dag family for a long time. And actually, truth be told, Ken, uh, the head coach at Colony, gave me an opportunity to coach the fourth grade travel this year and having a lot of fun with, uh, with the, those young guys. But you must get a lot of satisfaction out of seeing – the high school guys who were doing really well, knowing that you had a hand in getting them better in the off seasons. Yeah, you know what it is, and a lot of stuff with the team training. I mentioned some of the teams we play with. It's more so their coaches instilling the trust in me to say, hey, you can take our players for 10, 15, 20 hours, right? Because at the end of the day, they don't need other people to go in and work their guys out. You know, they're more than capable of giving these guys plans, and they get a certain amount of days to work with their guys. And for them to say, hey, we trust what you're saying, and we know that you can add value to our program, that's the biggest thing for me. And and I do get satisfaction of having just a, a little bit of, of influence on, on how these guys do. All right, Colony at Troy tonight. That's yeah. going to be my lead story. On uh, News Channel 13 live at 11 tonight, yep. Ashley Miller will come in, be there. Unfortunately, I was going to the game, but the whoever is the head coach of the fourth grade travel couldn't practice on Wednesday night Uh-oh. because there's a U Albany basketball game, and we need to practice twice a week, not once, and we've already practiced Monday, so I've moved the Wednesday practice to Tuesday. So at 7 o'clock tonight... I will be at Sand Creek Elementary School, middle school, yep. practicing with fourth graders, hoping to get them better to go win a game Saturday at Gilder at 830 in the morning. I don't know who this priorities. guy is. Priorities. 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 But anyway, uh, what, what kind of matchup do you see tonight with uh, Colony at Troy? It's going to be awesome. Last year it was a great game. I think uh, Colony won by one. Uh, Bowie for Troy is shot at the end of the, end of the, the fourth quarter. They're like rimmed in and out. You know, hopefully it's it's the same type of game. It's two great teams. You know how it goes the first game of the year. You never know what's going to happen, you know, especially when there's so much talent on the floor. And, you know, first game, they're high school kids. It's going to be a big crowd. And, and, you know, hopefully both teams play very well, and it's a great game. There's going to be like seven, eight college players on the floor, right? Yeah. yeah. Yep. 
Yes. How, how deep is Colony? I mean, we talk about Isaiah Moore, but the water, yeah. Waterman can shoot it. Yeah, Bryce Waterman, Brendan Molson's going to have a big year. Jeff Holmes, that's his nephew, uh, the coach from Shaker yeah. for, for all those years. Um, um, Josh Piskowski is a four-year starter. Uh, little Will Abar is probably the quickest kid you've ever seen in Section 2. He and is they, like lightning. Oh, yeah. And then they got a couple uh, good pieces that come off the bench for him. And, and for Troy, you know, you have Bowie, you have um, uh, Carmelo, the superintendent, his son. Yep. Um, he, his, he can play. Senior, he can shoot the ball very yeah, well. You know, a football them. player. You know, they're coming off. They, they haven't practiced too much, I don't think, because of the football run that they were on. Um, so they're probably getting used to each other. They just beat Corker in, uh, I believe it was, uh, the other day. So they've already played a game. Um, but, you know, these big games for these high school kids, it's like the Siena-U-Albany game where everybody gets all hyped up and there's going to be a big crowd, and then you don't know how these teams are going to play, you know. So, um Hopefully it's a good one, and, and either way it'll be a boost for the team that wins, and, and the other team will learn from it and, and move on. And, and both teams are, are championship-caliber teams, so hopefully they can put it together. Hey, Dags, what have you seen out of Kevin Herter so far, uh, the Shen product, starting as a freshman at Maryland? I love it. I mean, he's he's literally playing. He's playing 30 minutes a game. Maryland, I believe, is like 7-1. I think all their wins are at the buzzer, right? They've, right. they've won they by won like every two or three game, points, yeah. literally. Um, but, you know, his shot's not falling. That's that's the only thing I can see, which if you tell me he's doing everything else great and his shot's not falling, it's no problem. His shot's going to fall. You know, as, as a freshman, he's playing in big arenas. He's getting used to the rhythm of the offense. You know, shooters need to be comfortable, and he'll figure all that out. Once he starts knocking down shots, I mean, he's going to be unbelievable. And from what I've seen, guys, defensively, it looks pretty good out there. Looks I mean, awesome. I, I know there was some talk about, well, I don't know how he's going to do defensively at yeah. that next level, but – from the couple of games that I've seen him, and I watched the full game last week, I mean, he was out blocking a shot. The wing, oh, yeah. wingspan is so long with being six foot seven. I so, thought he did a good job. Yeah, the, the whole the whole defensive thing is like such a myth, especially in college basketball. You need to be able to, like Coach Beer always said, you need to be able to guard three dribbles, and you need to be able to play team defense. You know, nobody's not the NBA. You're not getting left on an island to go one on one. Right. You have help on both sides. Of you so all he does an awesome job of keeping guys in front of him. Just like they did at Shen. This is why Shen is so great defensively. They keep guys in front. They make they make you shoot over the top. They don't allow blow bys, and that's what Kevin's doing. And he's becoming a great defender. I'm so impressed. You said his shots not falling, and we associate Kevin Herter with hitting shots. Yeah. He's still playing 30 minutes a game oh, when yeah. his shots not falling because yep. he does so. Ma- Kevin Herter may do the most. In totality, little things yeah. that I've ever seen a basketball player do from from minuscule. It would never even make the broadcast, but yeah. like finding a way to get an entry into the middle of his own defense, yeah. or you know, uh, uh, advancing the basketball up the floor in a pass that doesn't yeah. matter, hits the defensive glass, um, j- r- rotations. I- I've just I'm, I've, I've been blown away by all the the dotting of the I's and crossing of the T's well, when it comes to Kevin Hurt. Well, even that block he had against Georgetown to save the game, that wasn't his guy. Right. You know what I mean? They ended up, they stopped the ball. You know, he he helped and recovered and, and ended up getting the block without fouling. I mean, those are the little things that, you know, if it wasn't the game-winning block, that wouldn't show up. But those are the things that he does. And he's just, he's a winner. All right, if you want to get in touch with Dags, it's DagsBasketball.com. And, yep, DagsBasketball.com, at DagsBasketball on all the social media sites as well. And, and like I said, we're always putting up content for people, even if you're not getting in the gym with us. If you are trying to get in the gym, we have stuff all year round. Right now it's just me because we tend to hire – college coaches so we got Shay Bromersky who's helping coach that he's an assistant coach at Southern Vermont Sarah Lombard who's a women's assistant coach at RPI um Julie McBride who's playing professionally I mean we have top level coaches that are coming in and help train Zach By who's always there let's not forget I was your first employee well he, you were the first and you've probably done the most but now I'm just getting nervous because now I'm Helping you out on the U Albany broadcast, so now you're going to be bossing me around, telling <laughs> telling me to go get you don't some be water. Late. Don't, don't be late. Don't be late. I'm always watching the clock when you're working. So, yeah. It's always a pleasure. Uh, we'll do this again uh, throughout the course of the season. I appreciate you guys having me. You got it, Stephen D'Agostino, with us at the uh, grand opening ribbon cutting ceremony at the Recovery Sports Grill here in East Greenbush.